Basketbal is een sport voor lange mannen. Veel spelers zijn meer dan twee meter lang. Zowel de Amerikaan Dan Coleman als de Canadees Ross Beckering zorgen voor lengte bij de Flames. Coleman is 2,6 meter zes en Beckering meet 2,3 meter. Drie. Zij zorgen voor de punten, inside the paint en moeten verdedigend de rebounds pakken. Dan Coleman miste de start van de competitie door een vervelende blessure. Injuries are a nightmare in themselves and then also having it early is you know, also really frustrating. So, but you know, I've been doing this for a while. I know how to get myself in shape. I know how to do the rehab and so it was just a process you had to go through. Frustrating or not. De ervaren forward speelde eerder in Portugal, Frankrijk en Finland en moest hard werken om weer te kunnen spelen. No one yes, I mean there's always a sense of urgency to uh, come back. Um, you know, you got to listen to it. But you also want to try to push it, try to be right on top of the injury and try to do as much as you can at the moment that you can. So it's kind of a give and take. But yeah, for the most part, I've been listening and you know, trying to work with the doctors and you know, had a good outcome thus far. Ross Beckering speelt zijn vierde seizoen op rij in de Nederlandse competitie. Hij werd bij ZZ Leiden twee maal kampioen van Nederland. I've had some success uh, and you know, it's been good to uh, share those experiences with some, some friends I made along the way. But, uh, uh, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with my time here so far and it uh, doesn't mean that I'm not hungry for this year and obviously I still have uh, very, you know, eager ambitions for our team and as individuals. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's been a great three years. It's been more than just basketball. I think that's the most important thing is just having a little bit more perspective on it. So the basketball part's been great and uh, just the experiences overseas, meeting new people, uh, enjoying a different culture and, uh, you know, just living out here. En uh, trying new things has been really good for me. So. Beckering heeft geleerd hoe je het beste kunt omgaan met het spelen in het buitenland. I think, like I mentioned in my last answer, it's just having a well-rounded kind of perspective to your situation over here. So I think, you know, in order to have like a healthy season, it, it's such a long season that I think you have to find some interests outside of basketball and uh, you know meet some new people and uh, really try to. Uh, I guess adapt a little bit to the new culture. So I think if you do that, it makes the transition and the living experience here much easier. I think that's just healthier for you as a as a person and as a player. So yeah, I'd say that would be my biggest advice. In Groningen was er dit jaar weer veel verloop aan het begin van het seizoen. Er moest weer een nieuw team gevormd worden onder leiding van coach Kalin. So I think a family is a really good analogy. I mean, you see these people every day, you know, twice a day uh, on the road. You know, whether it's a good day or a bad day, you're having to uh, figure things out. And uh, I think that's just, you know, team building is such an important part of basketball and many other sports. So if you're able to manage those things and uh, I think just how you how you deal with people and how you respond to, uh, I guess, just the challenges and obstacles along the way. I think that, yeah, it's really important to how successful you're going to be as a team. Coach is very intense, but I think he's fair. I think he, uh, you know. He's teaching his system and he does it well. And um, you know, we're 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 growing and we're learning. Pieces are coming in. Not you know, we had a lot of injuries early, so he's teaching on the fly. And uh, I think we're doing good, but you know, I think we have a ways to go. Beckering is geboren in Tabor, Alberta, een plaatsje met 8000 inwoners. Op het platteland van Canada is ijshockey en niet basketbal de favoriete sport. Maar bij de familie Beckering was dat anders. Yeah, my start had a lot to do with my family. My older sisters, my older brother, uh, all interested in basketball. But um, since you're from a small town, you don't really start competitive basketball until about grade seven, which was yeah, 12, 13 years old. So it's a little bit of a later start, and uh, I think there's a little bit of a, you know, maybe a, a lack of high high level high level coaching there. But uh, as you go along, you know, you pick up different things, and there was still some, uh, you know, really good mentors and, and advice I got along the way. So. Uh, yeah, I think it was just a matter of being interested in with my family and then growing that passion from there. Dankzij zijn drive en ambitie werd Beckering steeds beter en mocht hij dromen van een carrière in het topbasketbal. I had an older brother that was very, very good at a young age, so I think that uh, it always kept me hungry to improve. And uh, yeah, I think I, I really tried to seek out, you know, people that were better than me because I think that's the easiest way to improve. So. Uh, you know, whether that's, you know, coming to a, a better league or, you know, in university trying to challenge yourself against some of the top players. But I think is, is you know, embracing those challenges. And, uh, yeah, I love playing against people that uh, at a higher level than me that, you know, are better all-around players. It's not only going to help, you know, me improve, but uh, 
it's a, it's a fun challenge as well. So. Ook Dan Coleman werd met basketbal grootgebracht. I had an uncle who played in Europe and he played professional. So his name is Ben Coleman and that was a huge uh, inspiration for me. And I think around eighth grade, you know, I started to be tall. I was skinny, but I wasn't very good. But I enjoyed the challenge, and that just stuck. And then from that point, you know, I took it upon myself that I wanted to play. So I guess it's around the eighth grade. Hij is niet de enige in de familie die basketbal speelt. My little brother, he played at the University of Minnesota. Now he plays at St. Mary's. Um, yeah, so it's kind of in our blood. Hij voelt zich bevoorrecht om nog steeds als prof te kunnen spelen in Europa. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, especially uh, you know, the older you get. Things that were easier, you know, change and it becomes a little bit more work, but still passion. I still love to do it. Um, not work, not done any other jobs. So this is the only profession that I've taken on, and uh, you know, I feel real blessed and lucky to be doing it at my age. Uh, but you're still, uh, you're still young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But in February, I'm about to be 29. So you know, a lot of my peers that I grew up with have long been done playing. So you know, I feel fortunate. Het is voor de bewegelijke forward fijn in een land te spelen waar hij goed kan communiceren in het Engels. Oh, absoluut. In Portugal, hier, Holland, as well as uh, Finland. Maar in Frankrijk is het Engels niet zo goed. Ik heb de meeste van mijn carrière daar, dus ik moest een beetje Frans leren. Zo, een petit peu? Uh, een petit peu Français, oui, oui. Ross Beckering is getrouwd en ook Coleman heeft een gezin. Het is moeilijk met een zoontje van acht aan de andere kant van de oceaan. It's challenging, you know, you miss a lot. Um, it's really fortunate that there's technology and Skype and, you know, really I can get a hold of him whenever I need to. But you miss out on a lot and that's unfortunate. Toch is het nu makkelijker dan toen de kinderen kleiner waren. Well, I think, uh, I think actually the older you get it's a little bit easier because he understands and you can explain it to him. You know, when they're a little, when they're very little, when he was... Uh, You know, one or two, I left for a season, and I came back, and it was like, you know, it was a big surprise because he wasn't talking as much, and not obviously not being able to understand as much. But it was, uh, you know, it's getting better with time. It is nog niet zeker dat zijn zoon in de voetsporen van zijn vader treedt, al wordt hij hard aan gewerkt. Well, he's fighting me a little bit on basketball. We did basketball camp this summer, and he liked it, but he likes soccer, and he's kind of leaning towards hockey. But I'm going to try to keep him out of that. Basketball is voor beide spelers hun passie, maar ook hun werk. You know, maybe some people from the outside or maybe some people back home too, maybe don't understand, you know, fully that, you know, I still take this very professionally, you know, from from an outsider's perspective, they might think, you know, you're playing basketball over in Europe, oh, it's, it's a pretty good life. And I mean, it is. There's a lot of uh, things I'm very thankful for and I've been blessed to be able to do. But, um, you know, it's still a job in many respects and uh, you do have to take it very professionally, uh, take, you know, a great deal of care for your body. It's, it's a very long season. And uh, just balancing, I guess, like the, the physical mentee, or fatigue with like the mental fatigue is a big challenge. So I think like any job, it has its own challenges, but uh, uh, yeah, I enjoy it and it helps me passionate about it. I think that, you know, anyone who has a job, You know, if you're not that passionate about it, maybe you should be looking for something else because uh, it, it's a big deal. It's a lot of your time and a lot of uh, commitment and sacrifice takes to do well. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's just a very lucky thing and I feel very blessed to, to be working and, and doing something for a job that I'm so passionate about. Coleman kijkt nu uit naar de feestdagen die hij in Amerika gaat vieren. Yep, I'll be home for Christmas, not New Year's, but I'll be back just before New Year's. And... Uh, I'm excited, you know, six days at home, presents, more food than I should eat, and so I'm, I'm excited. Beide spelers zijn in de kracht van hun leven. Aan hun basketbalpensioen zijn ze nog niet toe, maar dat betekent niet dat er niet wordt nagedacht over wat te doen na hun sportcarrière. You know, older you get, you gotta think about it. Uh, I've got a kid and stuff, so you know, that makes you think about the future more. Um, but I think, uh, you know, some of my buddies have gotten into pharmaceutical sales. Um, I do a little investing on the side. Um, you know, probably one of those two things I'd probably do. A lot of my, a lot of athletes have done well in sales in my area, and uh, you know, it's something I think I could be able to do. I'm not entirely sure yet, and uh, I have a, a, a degree from university, a business degree, so I think I have some options there. Uh, you know, some opportunities that are a little more broader because of the degree, but. Uh, 
in a way, you know, I'll deal with that when it comes. And uh, when I do get back home, I'll try some things. And if I do like it, I'll pursue it. And if I, you know, if I don't have an interest in it, then I think I have the, uh, you know, guts to pick up and try something new. So I think, you know, that, that, that has its own place and I'll deal with that when it comes. So not sure yet, though.